Imagine days without electricity. No cell phones, no computers, no internet, no gasoline, no buses, no metro. All food in the refrigerator gets bad. No hot showers. Our world, quite literally, becomes as it was a thousand years ago, the dark ages. This is not a hypothetical scenario. It is what 55 million people in the US and Canada experienced in 2003 during the Northeast blackout. It must have been, oh my god, what do we do now? How do we get home? I need to pick up the kids from soccer practice and I'm late. Hey, officer, my wife's water broke. We need to get to the hospital. Any doctor around here? It is not surprising that the National Academy of Engineering named electrification as the number one achievement of the 20th century. Our lives, our standard of living, our everything depends on electricity. It is hard to imagine life without it. The power grid is a critical lifeline. Now, imagine life without running water. Nothing happens when you turn the faucet. Many of us would associate these images with a third world country. But this is America. We don't go to the river to fetch water. Orange in this map indicates the location where water levels have decreased by at least 15 feet. And where we do have water, we have serious problems. Iron and lead made it into Flint, Michigan's homes and Washington, D.C.'s homes as well. Sometimes the old water pipes just break apart. It is not surprising then that the National Academy of Engineering named water supply and distribution as the number four achievement of the 20th century. It is hard to imagine life without it. The water grid is a critical lifeline. Now, imagine 495, the Beltway, bumper to bumper. OK, I'm sorry. You don't have to imagine that, <laughs> because many of you experience it every day. Sorry. So then, let's imagine doing 60 miles an hour on the Beltway every day. Wouldn't that improve the quality of our lives? What about driving without the fear of having the bridges collapse as we go through them? Yellow in this map indicates the location of the 59,000 deficient bridges in the US. Would we venture to fly in deficient airplanes? I don't think so. It is not surprising, then, that the National Academy of Engineering named the automobile as the number two achievement of the 20th century. But automobiles need highways to ride on. It is hard to imagine life without them. The highway grid is another critical lifeline. I have been a professor at Virginia Tech for 28 years. And I know what you're thinking. He must have started when he was 10. <laughs> so I'm used to assigning grades to students. What if we were to assign grades to America's lifelines? Well, the American Society of Civil Engineers has been doing just that, 
the 2016 report card for Washington, D.C. chose a C for power, a C plus for drinking water, and a D plus for roads. When our children come home from school with grades like this, our stress level goes up. We quickly point out the much higher expectations we have of them. We know that, in general, higher grades will lead to a better future. So what is a lifeline, anyway? The dictionary definition says, something regarded as indispensable for the maintaining or protection of life, something that is needed for success and survival. I believe the power grid, the water grid, and the highway grid do meet this definition. Inside our bodies, we carry nine lifelines respiratory, circulatory, immune, reproductive, and so on. The quality of one's life is in direct function to the well-being of these nine lifelines. Similarly, the quality in our standard of living is in direct relation to the well-being of our physical lifelines. I have only mentioned three, power, water, and highways, but there are other lifelines our lives depend upon. Railways, waterways, airports, seaports. Due to use, aging, and neglect, our physical lifelines are crumbling, and so is our standard of living. An overall grade of C minus is not good enough. In the words of Jim Collins, and I quote, good is the enemy of great, end quote. Did anyone think about your lungs today? Most of us take breathing for granted. We know that the lungs are in there, out of sight. Our bodies are vital to our quality of life. And those of us who want to maintain or improve that, exercise regularly, eat healthy foods, and perform regular medical checkups. Pretty much everyone over 40 has realized that taking our health for granted is not a wise endeavor. America has been treating our physical lifelines like a lazy teenager, and we have the grades to prove it. It is time for us to grow up as a country and to take fuller responsibility for the well-being of our physical lifelines. Otherwise, our quality of life will continue to experience changes, some of which may include the use of an outhouse in the middle of the night. I should point out that during the Dark Ages, they didn't have flashlights. <laughs> Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen once said, and I quote, resilience is the immune system of our nation, end quote. My contention here is that resilient lifelines are the immune system of our economy, our security, and our quality of life. The freedom to do in our daily lives what we have come to take for granted is not free. Just like students need to study much more to improve their grades, we as a society need to make serious and steady investments to renew and expand our lifelines. America is home of the brave. We should have high expectations for the performing 
the performance of our lifelines. Our lives depend on them. Our standard of living is depending on them. So there is, when a strike hits, there is nothing wrong with expecting our lifelines, lifelines to resist it, to minimize the domino effect on other lifelines, and to recover quickly. The health of our physical lifelines is in a crisis that we must all address. Engineers are trained to solve these kinds of problems. However, we need everyone involved, not just engineers. Fortunately, there is an engineer inside each of us. You see, we solve problems every day. So when it comes to addressing the well-being of America's lifelines, we have to challenge ourselves to help solve the crisis. One doesn't have to be educated as an engineer to think like one. In fact, all we need to do is to cycle through the problem-solving Ferris wheel by first identifying the root cause of the problem, developing a set of feasible alternatives, picking up what seems to be the most promising one, implementing it, and then running a final check to see if it worked. And if it didn't, we'll go through the Ferris wheel one more time. America has the talent and expertise to renew and expand our lifelines. In fact, in emergency situations like this, we can also do it in a flash. This bridge in Minnesota was rebuilt in 14 months, half the normal time. The will to systematically renew and expand our lifelines so as to prevent catastrophic situations like this collapse, on the other hand, trails far our expertise. And that contradiction must change. Change starts with knowledge. Now you know what's at stake. The next step is action. Because if nothing happens, we will flunk out. And our punishment won't be our parents scolding us for bad grades. Our punishment will be our children getting sick from drinking dirty water. It will be economic collapse. It will be very dark and cold in our homes at night. So, the idea then is to orchestrate a bottom-up, grassroots, ordinary people movement to help renew our lifelines. This movement is to supplement the traditional top-down process. Our standard of living is on the line. As a society, we cannot afford to remain at an arm's length with this crisis. And to effectively deal with this crisis, it is required all hands on deck. Thank you.